Hi folks, I'm Anthony with Two Guys in a Ride, and today we are here at Treasure Island Casino with the Mustangs on the Mississippi Car Show, and we're here with Brian. Now, I don't know if you recognize this front end, but I sure did because I had an 89. Now, Brian, this is yours. It is. So, I already gave it away that it's an 89, but... It, what uh, what trim level is it? Okay, so it's a 1989 Mustang hatchback 5 liter LX with a sport interior. And it, I mean, it is absolutely amazing, folks. And, we, and we'll get into the interior in a minute. But the car, this, you, you, you've you not done a thing to the car, is that right? Uh, we've had it since uh, July of uh, 1989. And really the only things we've done are just normal maintenance, oil changes and... Uh, Things like that, and try to keep it running. And so, no paint job. Uh, very. There's one or two small places that have been touched up, but pretty insignificant. No, but I'm talking paint job. I no. mean, this paint is incredible. No. This looks like it just came out of the showroom floor, Brian. There are a few dings in it, but it's it's uh, in pretty darn good shape. Yeah. It's in very good shape, and the interior. Oh my gosh. I, I'm surprised. I think you wrote on the hood or something put an extra steering wheel in or something because it doesn't look like it's been sat in. Well, it's only got 13,000 miles on it. so 13,000 miles. 13,000 okay. miles. So, now that you know what the car is, let's back up for a minute Okay. and let's talk about how you got the car and that kind of story and, and uh, where it was from when you bought it. Okay. Um, so, I'm actually the same age as the Mustang. I was born in 64 um, and for um, the 25th my 25th birthday and the Mustang's 25th anniversary, my wife and I thought we would buy a 25th anniversary Mustang. So we, at back then, had to read all the magazines and all the things about Ford, and um, it appeared that Ford was not going to have a special edition. Uh, we know later that they had the 7-Up cars, and they actually put a small plaque on the right side of the dash on anything built after April of 89. Mm -hmm. um, but we gave up on finding the 25th anniversary and just wanted a five liter LX with an automatic because it was going to be my wife's daily driver. Okay. So we started to look and uh, locally we lived in Rochester, Minnesota. We couldn't find anything. Um, we did go to uh, the cities to freeway Ford um, and they didn't have one at the time, but they said they go to the auction and they buy cars and they get trade-ins and uh, they would look for us. So I told them I wanted a 89, I wanted an LX, I wanted a 5 liter, and it had to be an automatic. Um, and they called me. I said I didn't want a black car. They called me about a week later and said they had one, but it was black. And I'm like, I don't think I really want that. Uh, they said, come up and drive it, and we'll see what happens. So my wife and I went up and uh, took it for a ride, and that's history, I guess. We've had, I mean... had it since July of 89. Well, I think you recognized something really great when you saw it. I mean, of course, you bought it back. What year What year was it when you bought the car? We bought it in July of 89, and it was uh, produced in uh, early 89. And, and where was it before you bought it? It was actually originally purchased by Budget Rent-A-Car for the Minneapolis airport. Okay. Um, it was a and Budget Rent-A-Car. And it had how, roughly how many miles on it? It, it had 6,100 miles on it when we bought it. It only has 1,309. 13,009 on it today. <laughs> you just turned over to 1,309 when coming up here. Correct. That is just terrific. So, can we take a, pop the hood and take a look at the engine? Absolutely. Okay, so, so Brian, on the motor, have you modified anything? We haven't. Uh, the engine bay, other than the battery, and one small hose and two small hose clamps, the engine bay looks pretty much exactly like the day we got it. You know, it, it it's interesting when you look at the motor now, you look at today's, you know, filers and they are sort of a, like a little sculpture, Absolutely. right? They make them and this one wasn't kind of done that way. It was just engineered well and yeah. and, and put in, but it is extremely clean. The, the plug wires even have the date coded 1989 on the- On the wires? On the wires you see right next to the three there, it's got a 1989. You know, um, how many miles do you put on in a year? In the first year or two, we put uh, significant miles on it, but yearly now it's to go to a show here or a show there, 
Maybe so 100 or 200 at the most. Right. So it doesn't add up a lot. So you keep the miles low. But um, all right. So nothing modified in here besides the battery. This is the way it would have looked when it was new in 89. Correct. Okay. Well, let's close the engine cover and we'll go around the side. All right, over here on the side, Brian, I, I got to say, I, you know, when I had my 89, I had an LX, but it was not the 5 liter or the GT. It was, it was a convertible, but I'd always admired those rims. Those are some of my favorite Mustang rims. So this, this would have been on the car originally, right? Yep, these are actually the original uh, rims and actually, I hate to say it, but uh, they're the original tires that hey, came with the car. Hang on a minute. Did you just say original tires? Yeah, they're day coded 1989, actually. <laughs> Drive carefully on the way home. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> but that, I mean, so uh, you don't run across it very often. Of course, you only have 13,009 13, miles on them. But, um, man, I just, that those rims are in such good shape. Yeah, they're cool. Um, and you've never replaced the rims. I have not. Uh, they're called, some call them 10 holes, some call them telephone dials, um, but they're the stock rims that actually came, came with this with car. The came with the 5.0, oh, right. Okay, let's uh, come down here a little bit to the side. These are the stock mirrors. Correct. Right? Yep. And the door handles are up. Boy, you know, they must have been parked inside a lot because I remember my door handles, this plastic here, this here, yeah. fades like crazy. Yeah, the, the rivets break on the door handles yeah. and the trim fades fairly quickly. But uh, it's been garage most of its life, and uh, so they've stayed pretty nice. Uh, this uh, pinstripe is actually referred to on the invoice as bittersweet. That's the really color of that pinstripe. Because my, mine was black with that red stripe too. I didn't I never knew that's what it was called. Did it come with the Mustang mud flaps? They, did it did not. I added those. Um, okay. And at the MCA show that we were at a couple of years ago, that was a, a ding. That was a, a significant concern concern by some of the judges. Yep. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you don't want rock chips coming up and hurting your paint. So I think they look great. All right, let's step to the rear, if we could, okay. for a minute. I want to talk about this. You know, there were several different kinds of spoilers. There was. So, tell us about them. Um, the main difference between the spoilers is the LX had basically a flat spoiler, and the GT had more of a see-through, flow-through um, spoiler, there. that where the third brake light, there was kind of a hole mm -hmm. in it there. So, this is the standard fare for the LX hatchback. Because, I mean, what's important to, to, to understand is that it's not a GT. Correct. It is a LX with the 5.0 engine. Correct. And the sport package inside. Correct. Yep. Which is different than a GT. You would have seen some different things. Yep. The GTs had a significantly more, they had different rear bumper, different front bumper, side cladding, and they also had turbines or hurricane style um, wheels on them. Okay. Um, I, I like this for visibility. <laughs> And I, I honestly, if you take if this comes off, it doesn't look like the same car. It really does at all. It really makes the you know the, the convertible look of the car. didn't have this. It had, but it had the lifted wing that kind of went around, which really helped it dressed up. And then they put a fake luggage rack. Right. Yep. On there. Um, but that looks fantastic. Oh my gosh, I just love these lights. <laughs> I, I I don't know why. And uh, you know, in one year they would make it. I mean, this one's amber. This one's white. Or later years, I think they made this yellow, and this stayed white. Yeah, the Mustangs yeah. evolved through the Fox body from '79 to '93. They had many different styles of of taillights, and that's an interesting point that you make. That the GT, the taillights were what they call cheese grater. Um, they actually had louvers that were applied to the the taillights, and they people call them cheese graters because they look a lot like a cheese, cheese grater. grater. Yeah. Can we look in the trunk? Absolutely. All right. Okay, so, uh, you know, th this is interesting. It's kind of like a walk back in time, but you have folding seats. We do. The seats fold flat so that you can actually use the rear area as a luggage area. And, of course, on the convertible, that was taken out because of the um, convertible top storage. You, yep. could, you couldn't get that. Yeah, that was where the mechanism for the top would, would go into. Would go in and that was the, the convertible is a more of a coupe style. Um, so they actually had a trunk rather than a hatch. Like. But look how much room you had. I mean, it, it, it's slow, but this this would be a, you know the size of a large suitcase yeah. that you could fit in here. You could probably fit two almost full-size suitcases in there. And then if you fold the seats forward, yep. 
That is it's huge. some pretty good storage in it. Now, um, true to form, because this car is very, very original, so are these. Yes. So that, that that's that's why we're kind of holding up the uh, the 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 uh, lid. If they're uh, actually so it original slam issue. on us, but it's very very original. Yeah, you also do have the cover. Yep, the sunshade is original to the car as well. Wow. All right, you can close that over to the passenger side. I do have one question. That is not the original antenna. It is not. You're so, absolutely correct. Small point, but do you actually have the one? I do. So why do you run this one? The original antennas are actually quite high. Yep. And um, I've got several other cars, uh, so I parked this actually under a lift. I can't get it under the lift with the large antenna. <laughs> with the on. antenna. So you just put the smaller one on so you're not constantly switching. I do. But I have seen it, and you do have it there, so that <laughs> it's all original. I was just going to give you a little grief about it. So, Brian, what, um, we're going to talk about the interior in a minute. But uh, why, do, why do you collect cars? What got you into cars? Um, my dad was a car guy. Uh, he okay. had a 57 Chevy. Um, I went to school to be a body um, technician. I have always felt that the car, when I was young, gave me freedom. Um, and I believe that, you know, as I get older, that this hobby that I'm in, it's not as much about the cars anymore as it is about the people that you meet through it. Yeah. Um, and this show was a perfect example of that. Um, the reminiscing, the talking, and the talking about the different styles of cars and the different personalities of the people that own them, it's just fascinating to me. Isn't it? it, it the, the, the car culture is a very, it's a very fun place to be. It is, it is. Uh, it's a lot of good camaraderie. All right, well, let's step in for a minute and talk about the interior. Okay. All right, well, Brian, I gotta tell you, first of all, <laughs> thanks for the trip down memory lane here. Because this is the same interior that I had. The the, the red, I mean, everything. It's, it's identical, except for your speedometer goes higher than mine did. Because yeah. I had the uh, six-cylinder. Okay, so I always thought this was so fast. This whole part of the dashboard is it, it like a precursor to what came out in the Probe. Yeah, very much. You know, so let's let's go through the switches. These are, this is a dummy button right here. Correct. If you but, had, would have had fog lights for a GT, that would have been the actual. That would have been the fog light that. switch. This is um, headlights. Okay, over on the far uh, right on the top. Hazards. And then over here. Rear defrost. Rear defrost, and they're just a simple. You know, you push. Yep. And then you pull. Correct. I always like that design. I just very simple. I like it. Down here, you had uh, would have been like a trip. I mean, not dummy lights. Yep. Right. Yes. Okay. And then, of course, you got your panel brightness and dimness here. This was not adjustable at all. It was not. Like it was many years later in the Ford Probe. But you do have adjustable steering wheel? So the 89 is the last year, actually, with the tilt column. So, okay. Um, in 1990, they switched to an airbag. Up for here. The, yep. And then when they switched to the airbag, the Mustang lost its uh, tilt wheel. Tilt wheel. All right. So... Um, over on the far right, you've got this odd, odd thing. I call it a theft deterrent. <laughs> you know, it's it, it's a physical key. It is. So obviously in '89 there was no push start. There was not anywhere. So you just put the key in, and then you would just start it instead of pushing a button. And then um, you only had four buttons on your on your steering wheel. Yep, those That's are all it. for cruise. Yep. <laughs> That's all cruise on off. Resume, set, accelerate, and coast. Correct. <laughs> That's it. All right. I do like your uh, uh, no zone, no auto climate control system. Very uh, one <laughs> single passenger. <laughs> right. So, I mean, this is how it used to be. So you had max, you had normal, vent, floor, mix, and defrost. This was your temperature setting. It was a physical dial. And then that was your fan speed. Correct. I also love the cassette player down below. Can't be an 80s car without a cassette player. Uh, you know what? It was a good cassette player. I never failed. I mean, never ate a tape. Your little cubby storage area here. Uh, how many speed, how many gears was the transmission? It's a, they call it an AOD, so it's actually a four. Four. Okay. So overdrive was the fourth gear. Correct. All right, and if I open this up here, we got, of course, your cigarette lighter in the ashtray. You got your mirror controls right here. Yep. One of the few Fox bodies still around that the ashtray door works. <laughs> I, 
you know what? It's hard plastic. <laughs> I mean, it's it's durable, right? Yeah. All right. You got, of course, your glove compartment here, and then I'm jealous. You had a feature on your seats because the two features on your seats because this is the sport trim. Correct. Uh, that I did not have. So my passenger seat, for instance, was all manual. So you have, is that lumbar? There's a lumbar support, which is actually just an air bladder behind your right. back. That is got a small pump that you just push the plus push and the minus. Button. And then the bottom comes out. Um, right here. Yeah, and that's manual. But that's that's nice. Yeah, it, it helps for fatigue in the lower leg. Yeah. I might, mine, mine did not have, of course, mine did not have this plaid uh, cloth either, but that was part of the sport trim? It was. Yeah. Okay. Now, in, um, in back, well, there's not there's not a whole lot back there, but you, because you didn't even have like power window switches for back there. Those windows were just locked up, right? Correct. They yeah. don't move down. Right. Okay. Uh, so the only windows you had to go up and down were the driver and passenger in the front. Correct. And then you had your lock and unlock buttons in the front. But, you know, I, I got to tell you, I rode in the back of my Mustang, you know, on, a, on occasion, and I wouldn't want to go far in it. However, it was doable for a short distance. I mean, they're not known for comfort. No, not, not, uh, you not know, especially back. not there. No. All right. Um, okay. So, you know, Brian, what, what a neat car. I mean, that is, <laughs> it's a walk down memory lane. So thank you for preserving it. Thank you for looking at it. That's just awesome. Now, um, You've had a number of cars. Your dad collected cars. So you're kind of into this whole idea of keeping cars and, you know, keeping them in good shape. What advice would you have to somebody that was just starting out, for whatever reason, they're going, you know what, I I said I like, really like cars and I'm going to start collecting. What advice would you give them? Boy, that's a tough one. I don't know if I could answer that in a, a few seconds, but I think uh, buy what you love. Um, surround yourself with those people that know things about that. Um, the hobby, know that the hobby is more than just the car. It's about the people that uh, surround themselves with it as well. Um, and have fun with it. If you get tired of it, move on to something else, but, but have fun with it. All right, so in all the years that you've owned this car, what is one of your favorite memories? Well, I, I, would, I would say, again, it has to do with the car community, but if I was to pick two... Um, it would be, uh, I, we entered it in an MCA show in 2019, and we actually got gold uh, nice. with it. So that was awesome. Uh, but the other is, including my family in the hobby of or this car. Um, my son has known this car since he was born in 92. Um, it was my wife's daily driver. Um, it's part of the family, um, and it hopefully always will be, and uh, that's important to us. So... Those would be the two. Awesome memories. Brian, thank you so much for taking your time to share your car and your story with us. We sure appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching.